Okay, so let's start. Um, let's uh, create an image. Um, for this tutorial, I'm going to use Windows Server 2016, uh, 64 edition. Okay, here I'm going to choose T2 Micro. Uh, so this is going to be a virtual server that we're setting up. So let's go next and configuration. Okay, on this section, I don't really need to share any of my uh, hardware uh, performance. Okay, let's click next. Okay, add a storage. I typically leave this at 30 gig. I really don't need anything more than that. So let's click next. Okay, uh, so it's asking me to um, create a tag. Uh, I don't want to add a tag at this time. Let's go to security. Okay, so here, this is very important. We're gonna add some rules. Uh, so the ports on the PBX can be used on the AWS firewall. Okay, let's start adding our port range. Uh, I'm gonna use a custom TCP rule. Uh, I'm gonna use port 80. We're going to add another rule, a TCP rule for 5060. Uh, some phones provision using 5060, so it's very important that we open this on the firewall. Next will be 5061. Okay, I'm going to add a UDP, uh, I believe port 5060. And notice I'm putting anywhere, which means anybody can connect to the PBX through those ports. And again, this is just for testing purposes. I'm going to add, uh, I believe, let's see what other ports need to be open. Uh, let's do um, mm, RTP ports on the PBX. That's very important. Uh, to add because those are the ports that the PBX is going to use to communicate um, when we send out an invite. So let's use 49,152. Okay, this is the range to 64,512. Okay, this will be our UDP rule. I'm going to add a next rule, I believe uh, 443. That will be for our TLS. Okay. Now notice the source can be anywhere you can connect to this, or you can use custom and add the customer's IP who's going to connect to the PBX. In this case, would be a subscriber. Let's see what other uh, ports we can add here. Should be good enough. Let's review and launch. Okay, this is just informational. Review the the instance that we're going to launch. Okay, here uh, we have to select a pair for for keys. So I've already done um, a key for the for this test. Uh, so I'm going to choose. I love Bodia. All right, so we're going to launch the instance. It'll take a couple minutes for it to come up. Now, if we go to our main panel to view our instances, you will see that it's still pending. All right, now it's running. And we're going to remote desktop to this instance so that we can configure the PBX. Alright, I'm going to download the remote desktop. 
Uh, let's see. Oh, let's get the password first. All right. So make sure you store your file, your perm key. All right, there it is. I love Vodia, so I'm just gonna choose and decrypt my password. There's your password. Under password, you wanna copy paste it somewhere and then download your remote desktop file. So that way you'll be able to log in to your instance. Into your password or paste your password. Okay. Yes. Now we have a remote desktop session. Okay, it's setting up its Steam. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is download Chrome. I've tried the Windows Explorers on here and um, it was just giving me too much grief. I had to turn the feature off. So now I should be running Chrome just shortly. I do recommend it if you're going to use WebRTC with the Vodia PBX. All right. So Let's go to Vodia.com. Okay, go under uh, resources, online documentation. Uh, we'll go to uh, resource and then downloads. And here you can choose. Windows installation since that's what we're using and we're going to use a 64-bit version after you it's finished downloading you can run the uh, SNOM1 Windows installer package just press the run button click next agree to the terms check your ports which would be default and now uh, we are installing the Vodia PBX on Windows 2016 close now um, we're gonna go to uh, the local host so 127.0 which is just the local machine the account is admin no password accept the license agreement okay now we need a code so I've already cooked up a code and I'm going to um, copy paste it here You know, make sure you register if you want a license that's the first step and then when you register of course you need to log in but when you register you'll be able to see our bundles and you can use them as a trial so I already got my license I'm gonna submit it here and then we should give you an indication there's my Vodia PBX premium 60 test license all right now the next thing I'm going to do is go to system security, Windows firewall, and I'm going to allow an application through the Windows firewall. In this case, we want the PBX CTRL for the PBX, so that way uh, the firewall is not blocking any inbound and outbound traffic. So we go to programs, Windows C program files, go to your PBX, and then PBX CTRL. I'm going to do is click the open button, click the add, and that should be okay. So now we got that out of the way. The next thing to do, uh, we have to use, uh, we have to figure out what the IP address is for this machine. In this case, it's, it's LAN IP. Since AWS has... Um, we're behind NAT, so we have to use our IP routing list on the PBX. 
so that we can use the public IP when registering phones and uh, telling or routing the voice uh, through the public IP that we get from AWS. In this case, you can check our documentation. Uh, let's, see. let's see. I can do routing. No, I don't want routing. Uh, let's see SIP. Yeah. So SIP RTP. So here I'm going to use IP routing list. And it's used to override the operating system of the IP routing table of the machine. So I'm going to copy this example, which is just shows uh, LAN IP uh, to public IP. So we open Notepad. Let me copy. Okay, just so you guys can see the process and how this works. Okay, so I'm going to use the IPv4 address 172.31.60.131, which is the IP um, of the PBX. Or in general, just the LAN IP of the of the machine. Um, the default gateway, I'm gonna use it here. So this is again, this is used to change the routing IP routing table on the machine. I want to tell the PBX to use the public IP of the machine when conducting uh, SIP uh, audio and transactions. All right, so I'm going to go to IP check-in and I'm going to check uh, the external IP. All right, 54, 68, 20, 143. And that's what I'm going to use at the end in this routing um, for the IP routing list. So I'm just going to copy paste it. Okay, this thing. Let's see, it looks good to me. Okay, I'm just gonna copy. And then I'm gonna paste it to, I believe, uh, SIP, audio, uh, no, settings, and IP routing list. So I'm gonna copy paste that and save that. Okay, great. Now we'll get audio. We won't get any uh, one-way audio, which is a big problem in SIP. In this case, we told the PBX to use the public IP of the AWS uh, virtual machine. All right, let's create an extension. All right. You type your name, first and last name. And typically, I leave the SIP, generate SIP password and generate web password. You click create. All right, I'm going to check list. Um, okay, so here's the extension I've created, 440. Um, so I'm going to log out of the system. As you can see, it says not secure HTTPS. Just wanted to check if I can log in. Uh, so we have a feature under general systems uh, security. So I'm going to click on my extension and I'm going to change the web password. I want to show you guys um, how easy it is to use WebRTC or at least to show you how to log into the portal. Okay, so I'm going to log out. Okay, I'm going to use my extension 440 and then the web password I just created. This will bring me directly to my web portal or in this case the user portal. All right, so this is the user portal using WebRTC. You can make, receive calls, um, and typically all you need is a USB headset uh, for your customers. So this would be great, a great addition for service. All right, so we went over how to install AWS. Um, an instant for AWS, we installed the Vodia PBX, we licensed it, we opened some ports, we uh, did the IP routing list on the PBX and everything works beautifully. So I hope you find this tutorial useful.